Okay, how's everybody doing? So I think I'll do a little bit of a kind of a modeling bench vlog. That last upload, appreciate everybody's comments and uh, glad to hear that people get, you know, encouraged by it or whatever. Those are really brutally, like, hard to do. Um, but they take out, it's not that I don't enjoy doing them really, but just the amount of video, you know, like I think I shot four hours, three or four hours of video clips, you know, in total. And then I chopped half of it out. Maybe a third goes into the actual final cut. You know, everything goes into the can and then the can gets dumped on the floor, right? And you just use, yeah, I try to keep it uh, flowing and reasonable. But anyway, they're very labor intensive, but I think they're important too, like to interject one of those now and again, because it's the only way you can cover a build like this. And besides, like, who's doing it? You know, I don't think a lot of people are doing the scratch building thing. I think a lot of people are assembling models. And there's a lot of neat channels that are doing that. But I don't know if there's a lot of people doing this kind of thing. And I think this is important to the hobby overall. Which raises the question, you know, why do we even model? Why do you model? Why do I model? Like, why do I go to all this trouble? Like, why... I mean, at my age now, I'm sort of slipping slowly into retirement. Like, why did I evolve my, uh, like, despite my education and my skill set, why did I evolve into the type of life I have now that affords me the opportunity of time to do this kind of thing? Well, that, there you go, right? Um, this is something that I've always loved to do was to, you know, uh, not just build a kit. I mean, I began building kits like everybody, but, you know, I found out early on that you could make your own if you really want to, if you can build a box. a circle you're you're pretty much well on your way because everything is is squares and circles right 
um, how I figured that out was was if you take a like even a photograph or a drawing and you just put a one inch square grid over it you can copy it onto a blank piece of paper if you carry the same size grid over to the paper right so if I took uh, this for example and I just drew one inch squares and then I moved the one inch square grid under a blank piece of paper well I just draw this in like this one square like if I can match that square and match this one else, and then you end up with almost a perfect copy right so you do that in your mind or at least I do like I can remember when I was a kid like I guess that's where it all began was uh, you know as a kid uh, you know there were model shows like everywhere like at the local hobby shop uh, there was a model show um, shoppers drug mart had model contests actually shoppers drug mart sold like in Canada here anyway sold models kits as well and then they would have these uh, quarterly model shows um, you know like model contests and I can remember the first contest that I went in, I won second place. I actually won a trophy, like second place. And the model was a 32 Ford Roadster. And I painted it candy apple red, like custom, like not like the original, but put the plug wires on the engine, you know, all that stuff. And I won second place and I was so, so <laughs> uh, disappointed <laughs> that I didn't get first place. <laughs> You know, I was 10 years old, right? I thought, darn, you know, like, where did I fall short? And the person that won first place was this beautiful diorama of this desert scene with a, you know, the, I think it was, uh, was an A26, you know, a modified A26 night f fighter bomber or whatever sitting under this, uh, you know, palm tree with oil cans laying around. It's just built on this one by one foot or so. And it was really cool. And he had the spilled oil, spill stains. And I said, that's what I got to do, you know. Like, I'm going to do that if that's what it takes. It's funny what motivates us as kids, eh? And then I did the tank thing, you know, on the wooden base. And, and it just sort of evolved from there. And then, you know, after building a thousand kits, you know, I began to get bored with it. And uh, I decided that I could add to the kit and change it. And that was sort of the kit bashing kind of thing going on. And then, uh, you know, I just finally, you know, realized that, hey, you know, you can build whatever you want if you learn basic drafting and just go for it. Like, uh, you'll never be ready to scratch build. Like, you'll never be ready. Like, you just have to go for it. Like, you just have to get a subject, like, even if it's a little simple electrical box or hydraulic box like this, and you just got to say, I'm going to make it anyway. And if I mess up, I'm going to make another one or I'm going to keep doing it. And then you look back and you realize, well, that's okay. But, and you just get better and better at it. It's just like anything in life, really. This is where I really love my number 11 blade. stainless you know sort of almost uh, con convex panels you know I'll just put a piece under there and then I'll lift them up like that and then I'll probably have to cut another piece to go on there but it, just trim it down a bit so they look like see this Okay, so in order to make sure that I maintain this high point here at the center of this box, of this rather convex shape, uh, what I've done is I just took some uh, 
30 by 30 number 131. It's just uh, 30 thou by 30 thou. And I just made some tiny little pieces like this. All right, I just put a little cross in the center like that. Just a little glue. Glued those in and then just knife them down gently. Just knock the corner off, that's all. So it's a little sort of embossed kind of cross on there. And then when you lay this piece on, and you just glue that there, it'll it'll stay up, you know, at the center there, see? Okay, so now to uh, close up this particular panel, you know, which is a convex kind of shape, right? Remember how we put the center cross piece to just lift the corner? So the corner just sticks up a bit. So now um, we take the cutouts, and you notice how I cut several again, uh, right? Like, like if you need two, like this, you cut four, you know, or five or something, right? Just so that you'll have extra triangular pieces when you pull them out like this, right? Because they're not all going to be the same. And then you can sort of change up and try different ones. And then, like, one might be a little bit larger than the other. And you won't have to sand it or tweak it as much. Like, uh, this one here fits pretty good, like, right here, let's say. Um, and if not, I can just stroke it a few times with the nail file or your board sander and then you'll uh, you can put a little bit of a taper on it if you want uh, just to get a nice little seam there and then you can just stroke it over with some 600 sandpaper and uh, you know you'll end up with this nice kind of convex cabinet this is a big stainless this is like stainless steel cabinet where all the uh, probably all the electronics I guess or something or the hydraulic valves or something I'm not really sure in there but anyway I'm really glad that I went uh, to this level with these because you know sitting up on top of you know these towers like this um, you know they're gonna be fairly prominent detail there so and as you get older things start to turn out pretty good too like um, just from practice right like there was a 10 year period that I took off. I remember that, you know, from modeling, obviously because of life commitments and so on many years, uh, that I just didn't do it at all. But I always thought about it though. You know, I could never not, or never stop thinking about it. Like you look at something in life, you go, wow, that would look really cool if I could capture that in miniature, you know, in the same way that I thought, you know, that this, you know, when I saw this, uh, barge slip, you know, and having interest in model railroads, because model railroads allows the modeler to model every subject there is. Trains, bridges, barge slips, boats, tugs, you know, whatever, trees, scenery. I mean, what a fantastic medium to practice kit building, kit bashing, scratch building, you know, whatever floats your boat, right? And, uh, yeah, so why do I model it today? I just love to do it, you know? Like, it never went away. I, the love to model something in life, like something that nobody else has done, so you have a unique model, like, never left my uh, constitution, I guess, or whatever. You know, it's a form of art. Like, they say, like, an artist, like, whatever version of an artist, a painter, a sculptor, model builder, you know... Uh, you know, musician, uh, illustrator, you know, it goes on and on. I think art is in everybody, really. But if you don't do it, if you don't exercise the act of creativity, I think you get frustrated or maybe depressed or something, and you don't even realize it. And then when you go and do it, you find it's the happiest place you could ever be. Like I'm the most at peace and and uh, I wouldn't say happy because happy is sort of a relative term. Like it's almost uh, 
artificial, like joy. Like I find the most joy and uh, comfort. That, that's when comfort, uh, when I'm here like this, doing this, you know. And like, it, you know, I think that if uh, that's what you love to do, then, you know, I know there's family commitments and career commitments and everything too. And I know there's a lot of you out there that have careers and families. Uh, then you got to figure out like how much time can I devote to it, right? I mean, in my case, um, you know, I put as much time as I can and, and uh, my job, you know, I have the type of job where I, you know, as soon as I'm finished, um, you know, my duties or my responsibilities as a contractor, you know, and I do it professionally and I do it well, then I go to my modeling bench. You know, because I, I don't want to do anything else. I just find it to be uh, just a holistic kind of wonderful hobby that, you know, allows you a person to express uh, their creativity in a way that's unique, right? I just find that fascinating. And then the fact uh, that uh, when you build a model of something, like when you see a photo like this, like it's cool, or even when you see the real thing, but then you walk away and that's it. But when you actually build a model, you know, th through this way or whatever way you, you choose to do, and then it starts to come into fruition, it's really, really cool, you know. Like it's just really cool to look at it and to uh, actually have a sample of it. And then to understand, you know, all the design and the work and the reasoning for something like this. Okay, I should add this in because I don't know how it got cut from the previous video, but uh, how do I simulate the physics or weight on a piece of rope like this so, you know, so that it hangs right? You know, there's nothing worse than a model with a sp springy coiling piece of string that just kills, like just that one feature would just ruins the effect of the miniature, right? So what I did was is I took some water I just soaked these ropes first just with a brush and a little tiny bit of alcohol helps to penetrate the rope a bit and then what I did was is I took some uh, matte medium this is like 50 it's diluted quite a bit 50 50 like when I buy these I put them in two bottles and then dilute them 50 50 and then what I did was is I just soaked the ropes down with matte medium and then I just took these exacto handles like that and just the weight of them and I pushed down on them a bit like this, pushed down, pushed down a little bit. And then I just came back a few hours later and just, you know, pulled it off because it will glue to the handle, but it won't stick to the handle though, like it won't bond. It'll just peel off because the matte medium has a kind of a, a sort of soft sort of rubbery kind of texture to it but anyway it disappears and it di dries totally flat and then just put it back on and just press down a bit and then once once they dry overnight uh, you know you can still move it around you know really good and then just sort of shape it and it'll hold its form like that so it looks like the weight of the rope because that would be quite a heavy rope hanging there you know you can tweak it and and adjust it you know on the model to your heart's desire to okay anyway I don't know why you love to model but this is one of the reasons why I love to model because I end up with something like this it's the reason why I love to scratch build and I want to encourage people that are maybe on the fence about it. like just take something simple something very very simple uh, like a box shaped something and just try it and you'll see that you'll get into it. And the more and more you do it, because it's a lot of trial and error, right? Like, I mean, here's two pieces I cut that didn't fit. Now they ran short on me. Um, but that's okay. You just keep at her. And that, it's like the reward is fantastic. You know what you get, right? get this model that starts to flesh itself out that's really really cool okay 
again. So thanks for tuning in and uh, happy modeling to everyone. And I hope that you have a great day.